Okay, and welcome back for video two on the Entity Framework 6 model first approach. We are going to start this by telling you to delete the database customers from the first example uh, because we did fail to do something on the uh, constraint here. We did not set the end, end one on delete to cascade. So go ahead and make sure you select here, you select cascade, and that you save your uh, model. And then go into SQL Express, delete the database, and then just like we did in, vid in video one, generate the database from the model and continue down that road. And once you've done that, continue with this video. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to add, update, and delete records using the Entity Framework 6. Very basic stuff here. We're going to get into more advanced store procedures, etc. Uh, later on, but for now, uh, we're just going to talk about basic inline uh, object manipulation. And I've done some commenting for you. And I've worked ahead in the interest of keeping this video short and change the resolution, done a few things to improve it based on uh, what I saw in the first video. And we're always trying to make these things better. So. It's important to realize that all your work in the Entity Framework is done through your context object. Now you can see that object actually over here. If you look at your EDMX file and drill down, you'll see a context here. And you can go down, dig into it, and get down to the context and see that it's nothing but a class, a partial class. And uh, we've got a DB set of customers and purchases, which is our object types. So that should be no mystery. And if we look down here and we looked at them and we went to their definitions just by right clicking and go to definition we'll see that there is an ID and customer name and a collection of purchases no big deal okay so let's get this party started how do you add an object to the database? Well, the database exists, right? Now, I think I spoke in the first video about creating on the fly. That's the code first approach, not the model first. So, my apologies. We will be doing some code first videos, but that's later. Uh, the model first, we create them off the model, uh, like we've demonstrated before. So, we create the context. We're going to create a new customer object whose name is John Smith. We're going to create a new purchases object in the amount of $5.99, and the date is now. Now notice here, this is worth noting. We're going to add the customer to the context list of customers. This does not save it to the database. This just puts it in memory. Then we're going to add the purchases not to the customer. Remember, there's a parent-child customer purchases here. But we don't add the purchases to the customer. We add it to the context purchases list. It will take care of the foreign key constraints for us when we call the save changes. So anything we've done up to this point is only a memory. If we were to terminate the program at this point, nothing would be persisted to the database. So then we're going to save it to the database and show a problem if we have it, and otherwise show a message box, new record saved. Let's show that run. And I'm going to do it a couple of times, because the first time you're going to notice it's a little bit slower than subsequent attempts. Because this doesn't care, it doesn't go checking for modifying all that, it'll let you add five John Smiths. So I'm going to hit add, and it's going to add it, and it's going to pop up. Now notice how fast it is the second time. Now this has gotten a lot better in Entity Framework 6. In 5 and before it was slower. So just keep that in mind. The first time that you run a uh, statement through the Entity Framework, it's, it's a little bit slower than subsequent calls. So now if I close this, and we go through here, and we look at our tables, and we look at our customers, beautiful. We got three John Smiths. More important, it took care of their foreign key constraints. It's amazing. Amazing. Now let's look at basic update stuff. Here we're a little bit lazy. 
you can tinker with this code if you want. We create the context, we go into the database and we get the first record which is the first John Smith. We go into the, here we actually hit the customer not the context. We go into that customer's purchases which a context will take care of for us. My customer, my customer purchases. We select the first purchase and then we're going to add ten dollars to the purchase amount and then we're going to save it. So it'll be fifteen ninety nine if all is good and subsequent calls, 2599, blah, blah, blah. We know how that goes. So let's update that record. New record. And let's see if it did it. The primary key of 1 should read 1599. Beautiful. Working perfect. So that's update. Nothing to it. Now we could have gone in here and grabbed a different customer by primary key, by, I mean, it, it just, it doesn't matter uh, which one you grab. It just remember to, we're dealing with objects and that you don't have to put it back into the context. You can just call the context.save because we're just pointing at the objects within that context anyway. So we can do whatever we need to do. The last one, the delete, is a little more complicated since we know that John Smith is in here possibly many times. I thought it'd be kind of neat to show you guys and girls that we can go in here and grab all of the customers named John Smith. And you can read this like English to where you can say customers where name where name dot customer name is John Smith. That's what the equals greater than where. And then we take that result, convert it to a list of type customers is smart. And then the context, you say context.customers, much like dealing with generic lists, dot remove range and send it the list of customers you want to remove. Now, if we do anything, this is still just in memory. We haven't deleted it from the database until we call that save changes. So what should happen here? Well, let's think about it for a second. Our model says that we should propagate the changes down to the children, so all the purchases should be gone, and all the customers should be gone. Let's see. All John Smiths deleted. Let's see if it's lying to us. Customers, show us the table data. Nothing there. Looks good so far. Always double check your work. Show us the table data from purchases. Oh, fail. Purchase is still showing data. One, two, and three. So it did not propagate. Which is interesting because if we look at SQL Management Studio and we look at the database diagram and we look here, it says that we cascade the deletes. So it's interesting that they aren't there. Let's make sure. Ah, now this is interesting. This is Visual Studio lying to us. And I've run into this in Visual Studio 2012 a few times. Customers and purchases are empty. SQL Management Studio tells us that. why it says that they're still here I don't know but if I hit refresh now they're gone but you saw me select show table data and they were there it didn't refresh automatically that's a I don't like that as far as and, and, and I'll tell you what happened is it was already showing and so when I had when I said show table data, it simply just activated this tab. And you have to hit the refresh. So always double check your work. If Visual Studio shows you something and you're like, man, that just doesn't seem right, uh, here's a good lesson in double checking your work. So hopefully this video has helped a little bit. Uh, it's very, very basic. They're going to get harder. 
uh, but I don't see any reason to just beat it into you uh, in two videos. The next video we cover will cover a grid, parent-child, um, and using object data sources with an existing database. So it won't be as model first, it'll be more database first, and we'll show you how to use object data sources and the entity framework to get something up and running really fast uh, and have a completely running application in little or no time at all. So, thanks for watching. Hope you were able to help a little bit. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments. And thanks for stopping by.